Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the death of O.J. Simpson. Um, let me make just a few points here. Um, I understand that if you're a person of a certain age, you remember the era, you remember the man. Um, I'm just going to tell just some personal stories here. Um, I was a little kid. O.J. Simpson was playing the Jets, I believe. New York was a really partisan town, as it is now, right? Uh, Jet fans were looking for any excuse to boo an opponent. And O.J. Simpson, on a field that had snow, cleared 2,000 rushing yards in a season, right? It's, at the time, it was like a Wilt Chamberlain moment, right? Where, you know, recollections differ on whether that Chamberlain game actually uh, ended, right? Or whether they stopped the game when he got to 100 points. Understand, the same folklore exists with O.J. Simpson getting to 2,003 yards, I believe it was, um, by beating the Jets. It was shocking. O.J. was one of the most popular athletes at that time that I had ever come across, right? To this day, O.J., after he got to 2,003 yards, was just off the page. Let me say, too, back then, not a lot of black athletes had a lot of endorsements. And the OJ commercial of him running through an airport, I was a little kid at the time, right? That was one of my favorite commercials. And it was important because it showed OJ in a suit, right? OJ is not in a football uniform. OJ is in a suit. He has to, you know, run through the airport. Um, you got the feeling OJ had business interests, right? This is before, you know, the black billionaire athlete, right? Before the Michael Jordan, the Magic Johnson, the LeBron James. This is in the 70s. Folks, I can't tell you how limited the uh, offerings were. Understand, too, if you were in New York City like I was, uh, back then, the sports cast was a five-minute segment of the half-an-hour newscast, right? This is before CNN. This is before ESPN. You would hear about what OJ was doing with the Buffalo Bills. And then you would wait for halftime on Monday Night Football so that the best in the business, Howard Cosell, would then show you very limited highlights of each game and the Buffalo Bill <laughs> highlights a lot of the time was a running back who looked unbelievable, who was running faster than everyone else, who was jumping over tacklers, uh, who you understood was the gold standard, right? He was the man. So, years later, I make it out to the West Coast, and I'm in Hermosa Beach, and I'm at a sports bar, I believe the place was called CJ's or something like that. If you remember this sports bar, tell us about it in the comment section of this video. And I was thinking about OJ as a Buffalo Bill up until that point, right? OJ was really the, the most recognizable Bill <laughs> at that moment in time. This is before Jim Kelly. This is before Bruce Smith. Um, this is before Thurman Thomas, right? The Bills, you know, back then it was Reggie McKenzie. It was Joe Ferguson. I know Buffalo Bills fans know who I'm talking about, right? Well, OJ was the gold standard, right? You thought Buffalo Bill, you immediately thought of OJ Simpson. So I walked into CJ's, and this was early sports bar. This is before flat screen TVs, right? This is the 
late 80s, early 90s, right? You know, you had regular TVs, believe it or not, on stands hanging down off the wall. You also had projection TVs, but let's just say the definition wasn't too good. So you had all these TVs on one side of the sports bar, and on the other side, you had one big picture. And it was of the best athlete they could put up there from Southern California by way of the Bay Area. And that was O.J. Simpson, right? And O.J., of course, was wearing a USC Trojan uniform. And I had, you know, I knew O.J. had won the Heisman and stuff like that. But I was mesmerized. While the games were going on over here, I was just looking at young O.J. Simpson on the wall. And you understood, this was one of the premier athletes in Southern California history, right? You have a lot of great athletes from Southern California. Don't get me wrong, Jackie Robinson is from Southern California. UCLA, different world than SC. UCLA people know Jackie Robinson went through a year where he was averaging seven yards a carry. Robinson was a running back at times. But a Robinson couldn't compare to O.J. Simpson because you knew O.J. was the athlete who could leave the field and still be a player when he was off the field. How big was O.J.? Understand, before the 84 Olympics, O.J. was one of the people who carried the Olympic torch. Right? They had the torch run through Los Angeles. They picked VIPs to carry the torch. O.J. Simpson was one of the guys who carried the torch. So, about maybe a couple years after I was in CJ's in Hermosa Beach, uh, I was at the cottage in Laguna Beach, right? I was living that, you know, person comes to Southern California, let's hit some live spots, life, right? So I was at the cottage and I saw a crowd, it was a breakfast spot, and I saw a crowd around a table and I thought, what's going on here? I, I, I was wondering what was going on. It was a bunch of kids when you looked more at it, right? Laguna Beach... I know Orange County now has <laughs> changed a lot, but back then, let's just say, there were not a lot of brothers down there, right? This is before Kobe moves to Newport Beach and stuff like that. Um, I would run into my childhood idol down there um, from time to time, Reggie Jackson. That's how few minorities were, right? I actually um, was a member of Sports Club Irvine and I would play ball and uh, Charles White, former USC Heisman Trophy winner, uh, was down there at the time. And I'd play ball with him. Then I'd be out at a club later. And, you know, I'd hear, young blood, young blood. I'd look over. It was Charles White, <laughs> right? In other words, so few brothers were in Orange County, coastal Orange County, Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, in the early 90s, right, that we stood out. Well, let's just say I see a crowd of kids around a table, and then I notice that there's a guy signing autographs. He could not have been more gracious. He was chewing food. He was with a woman who was stunning. And there he was taking his time signing people's napkins. Right? I was so thrown by it that I ran inside the building, and I took out every coin I had in my pocket. This is before cell phones for young people. Took out every coin I had in my pocket, called my dad, who was in New York City, and told him, Dad, you won't believe it. I'm at a restaurant, and a few feet away from me is O.J. Simpson. And my dad and I just laughed, right? It was clear that I was seeing one of the world's premier athletes, one of the athletes who had made it, right? O.J., was actually making comedy movies. O.J. was on NBC, you know, interviewing athletes after games and during games as a sideline reporter, right? Well, just to understand, 
I was uh, at a gym. This is the life I used to live. I was at a gym. I was on a treadmill. I was looking at a TV. It was a long time coming. My New York Knicks had finally made an NBA Finals. And I was watching them against the Houston Rockets. Then suddenly, split screen, there was a Bronco on an L.A. highway. And you immediately knew that the Bronco story was going to swamp the NBA Finals. And it did. Right? Understand more than 90 million people watched parts of the Bronco chase. Um, on L.A. freeways. Understand, I mean, if you're from L.A., you know how preposterous this is. People somehow were able to make it to the freeway. So you had people on the side of the freeway as A.C. Cowlins drove O.J. Simpson toward Mexico, right, after Nicole's funeral. Right now, it's impossible now, to remember how good a running back O.J. Simpson was. Folks, I know Bear fans are going to hate me. He's much better than Walter Payton, right? All you have to do is realize that in the early 70s, they gave the running back the ball more. Everyone in the stadium knew O.J. Simpson was going to get the ball. Look at the numbers. And O.J. still somehow carried the Bills and averaged 4.7 yards a carry, right? That's more, much more than an Emmett Smith or a Walter Payton averaged, right? Understand how bad it was. Arguably the best at the position. Maybe the best football player ever. Jim Brown, uh, who was based in Los Angeles, right? Jim Brown would criticize O.J., now understand, Jim Brown back then would criticize Peyton. He would say, Walter Peyton has it all, except for a fourth gear. With OJ, he couldn't say that, because OJ was probably faster than Jim Brown. In other words, the criticism on OJ was this idea that OJ lost touch with his roots. <laughs> it wasn't his football playing. Even the greatest understood that as a football talent, O.J. had few peers. Right now, we, we forget who O.J. was. All of that changed with, we'll call it, his murders. Right? I believe O.J. is guilty. I believe many of his ardent supporters came to that realization themselves when they saw pictures of O.J., at a Buffalo Bills game wearing Bruno Maglis. And of course, understand, those photos could not have been photoshopped. Because what happened is one person who was at the game had a photo of OJ wearing Bruno Maglis. And then of course, other people who were at the game started finding their photos and independent photographers had O.J. wearing these unique shoes, which we now know the murderer wore the night of the murders. So it's impossible to go back to who O.J. was. And I'm, I'm just telling people, if you're of a certain age, you understood that O.J. was the top Heisman from USC. Understand, OJ was the top Buffalo Bill. You knew OJ was a Hall of Famer well before OJ even became eligible for the Hall of Fame. Right? OJ really was the guy people liked. Even when you knew he wasn't the best actor in the Naked Gun series, or what have you. I was outraged once. A great back, Bo Jackson, was being interviewed on the sideline by O.J. Simpson, and Bo wasn't looking at O.J. Bo was looking away and stuff like that. And I was a young kid, and I was outraged. I said, don't you know you're being interviewed by a Hall of Famer? I thought, this is an outrage, because O.J. really was the top wrong. 
right? This was the running back you wanted to be. Now, we didn't know the whole story, right? When it broke, it was startling. It involved allegations of domestic violence, right? I understand. I have a uh, crime site, wirecrime.blog, a podcast where I talk about O.J. Simpson and uh, on YouTube. It's my Esquire 777 site. And there are people today who question whether O.J. Simpson was truly guilty, right? That is the dissonance you get when you admire a guy and then he's linked to a terrible crime, right? You say he could not have done this. He is just not that kind of guy. I myself, when I first heard of the murders and I heard OJ was coming back from Chicago, I myself thought, oh sure, now they're gonna blame the brother for this. That was like my first thought on the OJ thing. I, I was thinking, what do they think OJ did here? Hire someone to kill his ex-wife? You know, it was ludicrous to me at the time. Until, of course, the LA Times and other papers put together the timeline and showed you that OJ was in Southern California at the time the murders were committed. Right, so O.J. Simpson, this is one of those moments for me, right? When I was growing up, I believe I only had one athlete on my wall for any appreciable period of time, and that was O.J. Simpson, right? You didn't just want to be O.J. on the football field. You wanted to be O.J. off the field. O.J. was the first athlete, the first athlete. I came across where when he won the rushing title and broke 2,000 yards in a 14-game season, OJ insisted on having his offensive line with him for interviews. So they'd be talking to OJ, who was the obvious star in the room, and OJ would be talking about his offensive line, how some guy who you never heard of made some block and if it weren't for that block, he wouldn't have picked up all the yardage and it was really a team effort, etc. Right? OJ really was one of the most socially adept people that I knew of when he was OJ Simpson before the murders. Right? So I'm not saying we can unring the bell. I'm not saying we didn't learn terrible things about O.J. and that O.J. himself might not have had personality disorders. I'm not saying any of that. What I am saying, though, is over the years, I followed many professional athletes. Right? I've been a sports fan for a long time. I remember when an athlete just rises to a certain point where he symbolizes a community or a city, right? If you're a Knicks fan from the early 70s, you remember Walt Clyde Fraser when he endorsed Pumas. And you remember the ads. Clyde in a mink, looking current at the time. This is early 70s Superfly current, right? And of course, Clyde was wearing Pumas. Right, you know, you, you saw it and you thought, oh man, I want to be Clyde Fraser, right? I'm just telling you, there were many people, many in the 70s who wanted to be O.J. Simpson, right? When I was with my friends and we had a football and we were playing football, just having fun, there was always someone who was the juice, always. He had that kind of influence at the time. Those are my thoughts on his death. I still remember talking on the phone with my father and my dad just laughing, right? Very few athletes at that time would have gotten my father to laugh. Had I said, you won't believe it, I'm here with Muhammad Ali, my dad would have laughed. He laughed long and hard when I said, you won't believe it, I'm here with just a few feet away from O.J. Simpson. 
right? We understood that meant top of the food chain. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.